this is a rare opportunity for me. Rajini Kamal and myself, perhaps uh, many of you are not aware, uh, we worked together in one film and that's the first and only time we were together in a film called Giriftar. And here we are on stage. I'm here really to be able to talk to these two great legends about another great legend who is amongst us today and in whose name we pay tribute today. Ilai Raja sir. Rajni, you've uh, worked with uh, Raja sir in many films. What is it that you find special about him? What about his music? What about his nature? Tell us something about it. So actually, I, mean, I know Raja sir from the uh, early 70s. Raja sir, he was uh, very naughty, really I'm telling you, and very mischievous. We used to gossip a lot, we used to, I mean, uh, to be frank with you, we had uh, drinks till morning. All that. And suddenly one transformation actually took place. I saw Raja sir completely changed, uh, even uh, his dressing and everything. When I saw him, I never felt like uh, calling him Raja sir. I called him Swami. Swami means saint. Even now, till then, I am calling only Raja Swami, Raja Swami. His real saint, that Nada Saraswati, is there with him and in him. Thank you. Come on. I'd like you to say something about Ira Raja, sir. Uh, Mr. Raja has become a part of my life. Out of this thousand, about ten percent belongs to me. <laughs> I say belongs to me. He created it, but it, uh, we own it up so much. So Actually, I've, may I just interrupt? Uh, many of you don't know, but uh, I think that um, between the two of them, Rajni and Kamal, I think you've both done about a hundred films each Must be. with Ilya Raja sir. A hundred films each with Ilya Raja sir. We're still counting, so we're not stopping with that. Uh, as he said, I was about to say, he stole my story because it's his story too. But uh, I have done all that he claims to have done that <laughs> with Mr. Raja. I used to call him Mr. Raja then. After that, after the transformation he was talking about, he became my brother. I never called him that. And today I had the opportunity of hugging him, which I have never done. He's a bit finicky and a shy man. But today I took the opportunity to hug him. It was long overdue after nearly 35, 40 years. I always wanted to do it to him and I did it today. And I knew that he would go to this thousand. 786th film was mine and I told him soon thousand and it is that day today. Fantastic. Uh, between the two of you, as I said just now, you've uh, taken Raja sir away for almost uh, more than 200 films. Is that, do you think, one of the reasons why Ira Raja sir couldn't come to the Hindi film industry to give us music? Because he was so busy making music for you all. <laughs> Actually, I mean, as uh, Raja sir told, actually, he is, uh, he, he never uh, does, uh, I mean, uh, he, he left everything to God's hand, he is completely surrendered to Almighty. So, that was uh, his mistake, Almighty's mistake, <laughs> he couldn't <laughs> brought him <laughs> long before. Rajni, uh, to connect with that, I just want to say that um, there is a certain kind of divinity whenever we meet Raja sir something very divine, something godly. If you've been to his music room, if you've been to his house, uh, I have and I'm sure that both of you have also. Uh, there is a, a peculiar divine atmosphere. Rajni, you too have been um, very close to divinity. Are there any similarities that you find between yourself and Rajasan in that respect? So maybe, Mamiji, I don't know, I mean, uh after uh, seeing the, all the worldly things, after enjoying it, after seeing that, okay, that, 
okay, that's it. So we think for, we uh, aspire for the bigger thing, higher thing. Probably that is the case. That is, that is the case. Even in Raja's case also probably. Kamal, you've uh, sung for Raja sir. Yes, that's his misfortune. <laughs> <laughs> He's not all the time fortunate. <laughs> and um, Ranji, you've never had an opportunity to sing with Rajasthan? <laughs> no, no, never. Only once, actually, just four lines. For that, actually, it took eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> um, tell us something about your uh, singing experience with Rajasthan. See, it's very difficult. He's been a friend, he's been a brother, but the truth is, he's also my guru. In film singing, I thought I knew singing till I met Raja. To sing for the mic, to correct yourself, I learned little, little tricks, which makes me look like I'm a master when I go to other people. I watched about 100 uh, re-recordings, background scoring. Whenever I'm shooting, I used to go to his uh, background scoring sessions. And that's helping me now as a director because I sound like a music director, which I'm not, thanks to Raja. There are some other details of uh, Raja, sir, which perhaps many in the audience are not aware of. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe for four years continuously, 52 weeks, 56 films Raja, sir, has given music for continuously for four years. And that includes background music as well. And many of those films have all been great box office successes. Um, this is a great achievement. Uh, uh, Kamal, while you were talking about working with Raja, sir, I am reminded of an incident, perhaps you'll be able to explain it better, of what you did with one of your film's music in Hiram. Yes. Would you like to describe that moment? I'm, I'm glad you brought this up. I've been waiting for nearly 15 years because of that man. He said, don't talk about it. That's his good quality. We have the liberty to talk today, Raja. Now, sir. today, Please. it's my stage, our stage. <laughs> and I had gone to somebody else to do the music. Uh, that's the first time I've used in Raj Kamal Films, my company, another music director. Something went wrong and uh, I had a problem. I had shot all the songs but I was not able to use it in the film. So sheepishly I went back to Mr. Raja and said, I made a mistake, so help me out. So he was looking at me and he said, how much did it cost for you to shoot all the songs? Is that what you're going to ask of me? No, tell me. I said, I'm going to reshoot it, so don't trouble me now. And he said, no, you're not going to reshoot it. I'm going to dub it for you. I said, no, I want hit songs. I'll give it to you. And I've never heard of this. It, it's, it's a textbook kind of work for any music director. The song was recorded. He saw the lip sync like a dubbing film. He started making music, which was totally different. The song I recorded and shot was different. And he made hit songs of them. It is not only, I've seen people in circus walking on wire and uh, throwing teacups onto their head and balancing. It's th that kind of a balancing act with fantastic music. Yeah, yeah I think that many that uh, who are not aware of how films are made, uh, I just want to repeat what Kamal has just said. Kamal went to a music director, recorded songs, went to location, shot those songs, and then decided that perhaps um, he was not happy with it. He went to Raja sir and said, this is the music, I want to change it. Raja sir said, don't change anything, I will change what you have shot. So he looked at the edited versions of those songs and looking at the lip sync of the artists that had been shot, Raja sir composed, uh, composed fresh music which synced with the already shot portion. And all those music and everything became super hit. That's an incredible feat. I've never heard of this thing before. 
And really all accolades to you, Raja sir, for having done that. And it's a lip sync. Some of them were Absolutely, lip sync. Yeah. I mean, so those lyrics were fixed. Any, any incident, uh, Rajni sir, that I know you've described many personal incidents with Raja sir and maybe it's not wise to repeat them now. But uh, um, <laughs> were there any moments when you felt that when you're sitting in a composition that he has made, that you've disagreed with him or you felt that maybe you wanted something else and what were Raja sir's reactions? No, I mean, I never interfered actually with uh, Ilya Raja uh, music. I never actually, that was not my field. Uh, I never entered into it. I, I used to left everything to him. Yeah. Kamal, what about you? I, I thought I was interfering, but I was only learning. <laughs> I used to say the silliest things and he'll say, Tell me what you want and I'll give it to you. And uh, it's always been that. And uh, I learned a lot. And by arguing with him, I learned. So that's, that's my only learning technique of saying something, knowing fully well that he's right. But I'll say, how about this? And he'll say, why that is not right? And that's how I learned. Well, I had um, a very small similar experience with Raja, sir. I've, uh, never dared to sing in front of him because I found that very embarrassing. And every time a song was composed, I would ask him to send the Pro Tools somewhere else. And Adesh Srivastava, who's here, we used to sit in the studio separately and record it. But there was one occasion in Pa when I had to sing a song with Rajasa in front of me. And I cannot tell you how frightening that was because uh, um, you're looking at a genius who stands there and and catches every little moment and wants to correct it. And even though it was a little kid singing um, uh, with some kind of prosthetics on his face, uh, it was amazing how he corrected each and every little line that I was singing. Thank you so much, Raja, sir, for that input. And thank you for giving me this opportunity to have stood in the same room as you and perform in front of you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kamal. Thank and you. thank you so thank much, Rajnik.